Hey, what's up guys, Ashby to Ashby Farms. Uh, so this video goes out to Andy Basinger. He asked me if I could speak more about my bee schedule. Um, as a creator of content, it's hard sometimes for me to come up with my own ideas for the next video. And sometimes it's easy. Um, I feel like a lot of these ideas have kind of been done before on YouTube, so I try not to do too much repeat stuff, but inevitably that's that's what has to happen. So. Um, for me to you, if you come up with something you'd like to know more about, um, please put it in the comments, reach out to me on Facebook, call me directly and tell me, hey, can you tell me about this? Because as I grew through this business, um, the, I worked through the logistics either in my head or by screwing up. Um, so I kind of forget about some of those things that people who are trying to expand their operation may not be able to uh, have answers to on their own. You know, for instance, um, in my own bee club, I called a couple of the guys who have, you know, one guy's got 50 and one guy's got 100 hives. And they both, you know, kind of laughed at me and they said, uh, Ashby, we've, we've not, nobody around here dreams like like going to 800 hives. Uh, we, you know, you might want to reach out to some folks in, in, in bigger operations outside of our state. And I did, and that's how I got a lot of the answers I've gotten. Um, and not a lot of people real big uh, either had the experience or were willing to share. So with that being said, uh, this video is going to be about the bee schedule. It's going to be two parts coming up. Um, the first part is um, going to be about the schedule for the year. And then the second part will be about my schedule on a three-week basis. So that in mind, um, bee schedule for the year looks like this. Um, basically, I'm going, of course, every everywhere is different. It's based on your climate. But everybody from North Georgia through Gastonia, North Carolina, Concord, Cabarrus County, Salisbury, uh, Burlington, Raleigh, North Raleigh, Henderson, on out to Virginia Beach. We are all kind of in the same same belt. So you can pretty much copy my dates to a T. Um, so let's see, February, I'm gonna walk you through about, it's a two week schedule that I'm in the beehives. It doesn't matter if you've got 800 or eight, you need to be on the same schedule. Even though the bees take 21 days, if you stay on a two week schedule, um, you can stay ahead of most of the problems. So for us, uh, coming out of winter, February 6th, we, uh, and I have all this pretty much planned out. It's all in my head, but some people just need to write it down. Um, so February the 6th is our first date we get into the bees and uh, we haven't been in them since October the 20th. So we get into the bees, um, we give them a quick peek to make sure they're still alive and we feed them two to one syrup. Um, and most everybody gets a gallon. And that just says, hey, stay alive a little bit longer. It's like insurance and um, red maple should be hitting within, this year was within a week, so around uh, Valentine's Day. Um, then let's see, the next date we get in is February 20th. February 20th, we're equalizing to Make sure everybody's got at least four frames of brood, preferably five frames of brood. So then two weeks later, we're gonna be getting into the bees around March the 6th. And um, most, uh, if, if it was overwintered as a single at that point, it's a full box. If it's been overwintered as a 10 frame double deep, then you should have been stealing the brood from, uh, on February the 20th from the 10 frame double deeps to support the singles and get on everybody as a strong single. So somewhere around maybe February 26th, that's the except, that's one of the exception dates. Um, so we were just in on February 20th, go a week later, February 26th. I'm gonna be giving them a single, uh, a second story and pull up one frame of brood. And that encourages the bees, all the nurse bees have to go up uh, to the second box. And while they're up there, they'll go ahead and start expanding. So we get to about maybe March 6th, March 8th. And now we've got a 10 frame double deep. But if you look, wait for them to draw it all out, they'll swarm on you. So we're going in around the 8th. Well, I grafted for us on the 8th. And then, um, so our cell builders were set up a week before that as well. I, I, I always set up my cell builders a week in advance. So we're March 8th, we grafted. March 9th through the 12th, we go around and we pull all of our splits. Um, for us, we shake all the bees down into make sure into in order to ensure the queens in the lower box. Um, I want everybody to have 
uh, four frames of brood and a frame of pollen, any other resources get pulled up to the second box. Queen excluder in between, come back within a day. All the nurse bees go up to take care of all that brood in the second box. And then we know the queens in the bottom box. You, you can steal the bees, you can steal all the resources, anything above. That's how we make all of our splits. And then at that point, we're now dealing with, you know, by like March the 12th, we're dealing with singles that are every single one of them at the same stage. You got, you know, four frames of brood, frame of pollen, frame of honey. Um, so now they'll all expand at the same rate. And that's somewhere around March the 12th. Is, that's our completion date. So fast forward two more weeks, March 26th, then they've grown out. They need a second, you know, it's a full, it's a full, uh, single box so um we go around and from march 26th not not everybody expands at the same rate so march 26th and then again a week later april 2nd we're going around and, and at appropriate times we give them a second box pull a frame up letting them expand into and um so they need about for us that's a, a three-week growth period which brings us to right now the 18th of april so now we're gonna expect to find 10 frame double deeps and because of the nectar flow that's happened in the last three weeks most of these colonies have really aggressively drawn out foundation frames because i don't have drawn comb we're still expanding so they are uh it's like feeding them and of course they're just drawing out wax like crazy so our goal is to have a full box of brood plus maybe four to six frames of brood up top around April 20th, that's our target date. And starting uh, Monday, we'll go around, shake all the bees down below a queen excluder, make sure there's uh, a, a frame of food on the outside frames in the bottom box with eight frames of brood. Anything excess that goes up above, we're making sure the queen is in the bottom box because I run a single brood uh, chamber nest, and a, a single story. So then put your queen excluder on, put your second box on and make sure to go ahead and put that third box on, but bring up a frame of brood into the third box, encourages the bees to go up. And then they'll, once they're up there, they'll, they'll draw out subsequent boxes. And that's the beginning of our nectar flow. Um, it came about a week early this year because of our warm winter and warm spring, but my my yearly calendar is already set. I can't worry about Mother Nature. My, my plans are based on 20th of April. So the nectar flow begins. The swarm tendency goes down. The second story box, which has brood in that single frame in the third story box, it hatches. Once it hatches, the bees backfill it with honey. So in an ideal world, we'll get two deep boxes of honey off of every colony on average. Some cases work out like this. Uh, not every queen expands. Some queens are better than others. You know where your strong colonies are and not. So some colonies this week, if I find a colony that's just not hacking it, they're not going to make a box of honey at all, much less two boxes of honey. What I'll do is I'll go in and we will steal all the brood we can and bust them back down to a queen two frames of brood and a frame of pollen. They've got nectar coming in and all the brood, leave all the bees, just the brood. If there's if there's four, five, six extra frames of brood, we'll steal it and give it to our strong production colonies as a in the third story. And go ahead and give them a fourth deep box. Now think about that. If, that, if our strong colonies already have eight frames of brood in the first box, say four frames of brood in the second box, that's 12 frames of brood. If I go ahead and give them eight, nine, 10 more frames of brood in the third story, think about how many bees that is hatching by May 1st, peak colony numbers May 1st. Then what is currently all the nurse bees turn into forager bees because all these bees hatch and turn into nurse bees. They, they swap roles. So then we've got this all the nurse bees in the current colony taking care of 12 frames of brood turn into foragers for the month of May. And we're building a super colony that won't swarm because the nectar flow started 10 days ago. So the, the weak hive that wasn't gonna make honey, we're gonna steal from it to make sure our strong colony just has this big boost in population and makes an extra box of honey. 
So uh, we're just using Peter to pay Paul in order to make sure we've got enough honey. So um, the month of May, we're going to go around twice, and that is maybe uh, like the 6th of May and the 20th of May. And make sure that if a colony has packed out a box with honey, that they've got room for another box. So not every colony is going to work out like that. But you you know in our operation maybe a third of the colonies will, will work out like that. So um, we want to we want to maximize that ability to produce honey. Then we get into in May also. So I'm starting my cell builders the 23rd which is this upcoming Sunday. Flash forward to uh, the 30th of April, and we go in and we get rid of any queen cells out of our cell builders. And then I'll graft on the 6th, um, which is making those bees. The majority of the brood has hatched. It's hopelessly queenless. Drop our grafts in on the 6th, and they will emerge on the 16th of May. So once I do my grafts on the 6th, the 7th through the 12th of May, we pull two frame splits out of every colony for our own stock. And uh, they'll begin to make emergency cells. But of course, my cells are one day ahead of their emergency cells. Uh, it's insurance. So that if something's wrong with my cells and they don't hatch, they're not waiting another three weeks. They've got a cell coming right behind it. It just happens that my graphs are like a day or two ahead, a day to five days ahead of, and that's what I'm doing mid-May is uh, just, you know, early to mid-May is pulling my own stock. And we'll bring those to the nuke mating yard. And because drone population is at 100% mid-May of what it's gonna be for the year, then I expect to make really good queens for myself. I just did the prior video like that. Um, so then we go around the 20th, make sure everybody, if they need another box, they got another box. Um, and then we're just kind of waiting around until mid June. For me, that's a month to build pallets and lids. Um, and we get into mid June and we start harvesting honey. Um, we harvest honey, man, for a straight month. It's going to take us a month to get through it. And uh, then we're in mid-July. We start feeding heavily around July the 1st. Feed a thin syrup, you know, like a 1.3 to 1, 1, 1.3 to 1.5. You know, for, for me, I look at it in my barrel. It's 150 pounds of sugar to 30 gallons of water. So it's 150 pounds of sugar to 240 pounds of water. Um, whatever that works out to be. It's a thin syrup. It, it just keeps the numbers in the hive up. It keeps the queen slightly stimulated. It doesn't let them starve out. And we feed uh, quite a few feedings. That's five feedings. That's um, July 1st, mid-July, August 1st, mid-August, and September 1st, five feedings. It's every two weeks. Um, that makes sure we don't have any starve outs. And then we are into August 1st. August 1st, everybody gets an apivar strip. September 15th. Um, ape four strips come out, of course, around September the 10th. That's when our goldenrod begins. Uh, September 10th through October 1st, the bees can make as much goldenrod honey and pollen as they want in the hive, but not everybody produces the same. Then, uh, we, let's see, um, uh, we get into about October the 1st. I want to be done feeding by October the 20th. So we've got three weeks to pack on weight. So I'm like every five days, I'm dropping in two to one syrup to make sure all the hives have the appropriate amount of weight, which I like to see about 90 pounds on a 10 frame single, just pack full. And then uh, they're set October 20th. We don't see them again until Valentine's Day. That's our yearly schedule. Um, right now, let's switch off to the second part of this, which is... Uh, my personal schedule. So right now I'm a dad, I'm a new husband, I work a day job, uh, Corey's in nursing school, and uh, I run a bee business on the side. So we're a little busy. So we have every day planned out till June. Um, obviously nobody wants to live this way. This is what it takes to, to get to a point where I can leave my day job. So um, between custody schedule and date nights for when they are, whenever we squeeze one in and um, 
grafting schedules and getting equipment built. Um, you really have to plan it to the day. Um, Corey has times where she has to be in the hospital for her preceptor hours. Um, I have certain schedules at work. I have a second shift to uh, have to work every so often for like a week. Um, so we're pretty detailed to the day. And, and I basically look at our family schedule and then I design my B schedule days around that six weeks in advance. Um, so it's pretty easy to get to the day and say, here's this. And then of course we have weather. So if weather, we have to have, you know, it's just contingency plans, but if, if something happens with weather, then we adjust accordingly. Um, and you just kind of got to roll with the punches. There's no real, I, I like to schedule at least three weeks out always. Um, it lets me know what's coming up. It gives me time to play catch up on building stuff or order things or make sure we've got something in stock. I don't like having to wait for, for shipping. I, so I like to have all my supplies on hand. In the case right now, we need, you know, about 1,500 more frames. So um, that's three or four nights of me building, you know, for the entire evening, 400 frames per night to get it done. I know that I need that in three weeks. So uh, I've got uh, a three week time period to knock that out. So um, nights where I, uh, when I, like when I don't have my daughter, um, you know, she was with her mom, I knock, I just, stay up to midnight and then turn around and get up at five, um, putting in the hours. There's no substitution for, for hours worked. Um, so that's kind of the B schedule for the year and for the three weeks. And, and so I know what my, you call them waypoints or specific dates are that I need to hit. And um, when I look at what's the next major thing do, then uh, what, what we need to accomplish in the next three weeks, then that, that lets me set my day-to-day -day schedule on how to get that goal accomplished. Um, sometimes, you know, we don't always get things done right on time. Um, and if you don't get it done soon enough, you'll pay the price. You'll have a, a mess up. It can set you back an entire season. I have had enough screw ups in farming with my produce farm where I missed specific dates um, in farming due to not making my, my bee business a priority. Um, and it's cost me two whole seasons in tomato farming, learning those lessons. So I no longer choose to learn those lessons. Um, folks, friends of ours, they understand what we're, you know, ever are people say, Oh, I might have to give up my such and such life. I might not be able to spend a lot of time with my friends. Well, my friends all know how bad I want this. My friends all know how serious this is. Everybody in my family knows how serious this is to me. So they know, Hey, we're not going to have a, a friend's party night on a Friday night, we're not going to be there. We're, we're missing out. We're sacrificing this part uh, of our life for a year so we can change the course and direction of every year, the rest of our life. Um, that's difficult for some folks. For me, it's real easy. I want to change the course that, um, uh, my family is on and, um, I can't leave my day job quite yet. So we're bridging that gap. And the, the, it gets exponentially harder the closer to that goal you get. You know, the first year managing 50 hives is a lot easier managed than 300 is a lot easier managed than 800. The closer you get to that goal, the harder it's going to be. And we're kind of in that home stretch right now. So uh, it's not fun. Um, if you ask me about my, my work-life balance right now, it's a hoot. I'm not having a lot of fun at the moment working a, two full-time jobs. But that's what it takes. Um, it's not for forever. We have a short term goal in mind. Like in three months, I can come up for air. I only have three months left. Um, that's pretty, it's pretty good. So, uh, it's been a long time awaited goal. It would sure suck to strive for a goal for 39 months and not push through the last three. Uh, so I encourage everybody, you know, uh, hard work looks like sacrifice. What is sacrifice? Sacrifice looks like it every aspect of your life for, for us wanting to be commercial beekeepers. I'm sacrificing every fun thing I would normally be doing, like going on vacations and hanging out with friends and even date nights. Um, Corey sacrificing for our family in nursing school. Anybody who, who knows um, a nursing student, man, they, they understand nursing students just, um, it wipes out your schedule. So fortunately for two of us, while she's in nursing school, I'm building the bee biz. If one, if one has to be gone from the other, might as well both be gone from each other in a sense. And then we just kind of catch up here and there and we both have an understanding that, that this has a, a finite date 
um, and then she'll be a full-time nurse and I can be keep full-time. We're both going to kind of accomplish our dreams about the same time. So I hope that helps you um, with planning and scheduling and gives you some outlook from what a commercial B-Biz looks like if you're thinking about growing. Uh, again, if there's something I can help with, if you come up with an idea, I don't know about this and hey, Ashby, can you lend your insight? I'd love to make a YouTube video about it. So please write it in the comments, shoot me a message on Facebook, Messenger, call me directly. Um, I talk to a lot of different beekeepers through the week. Um, any way I can help you, please let me know. Guys, if you found this content helpful, like everybody always asks on YouTube, I'm asking, please, uh, I need you to do three things. I need you to subscribe if you're not already. Please hit the like button down below and please comment. It helps me in the YouTube algorithm to get found. So I appreciate your time watching today and y'all have a great day. Thank you. Bye-bye.